Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, at the risk of losing all interest, <laughs> we're gonna do an, uh, an edition of something that I call more dentistry than you care to know about. Uh, but I actually think this is really important because a lot of times when you have a patient that comes in with muscle pain or uh, tooth pain or TMJ, TMD, we wanna do an assessment and we use this tool right here. This is called a dental articulator. So basically what an articulator does is it allows us to see what your teeth are doing during normal movements without your muscles getting in the way. And uh, it's a really good aid. Uh, you know, oftentimes when you come in, you'll do a diagnostic scan. You really need to be like a hand model here or maybe cut my nails. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, a lot of times if you take a 3D scan, uh, I know that there's some software that is developed in the market to allow us to see uh, how a patient chews, but this is usually actually a much simpler approach. So you take models of the teeth uh, and then you mount it onto this jaw simulator and you're able to basically then recreate movements, increase the latch here, recreate movements of the teeth and where wear patterns are at. And so for this patient, she's actually coming in today and we're gonna start with a little therapy. So occlusal therapy is basically step one, which is stabilizing the bite, stabilizing the jaw, stabilizing the teeth. And then when everything's stable and she's feeling better, then we go ahead and actually restore the teeth, which is adding most of the time back to structure that's lost or aesthetically enhancing the smile for the patient. So if I'm looking at this patient's bite, I'm actually gonna do something very simple with the articulator and I'm gonna bring it in here. First thing you're gonna notice, I'm gonna try to do this. I'm gonna point at this tooth right here, this guy right here. I do need to cut my nails right there. You'll notice that that is a canine tooth that's starting to flatten out, okay? If we look at a natural unworn canine, it has a point. This tooth no longer has a point. So if this patient is biting and I slide her lower jaw to the right, I can't move her lower jaw in this articulator. So we're simulating that her lower jaw is moving to the right. You'll see that those canine teeth right there are touching. And then I'm gonna rotate this all the way to the other side and I'm gonna demonstrate what that would look like if her lower canine teeth are touching. You'll see that you start to get those back teeth that are very close to rubbing in the back, okay? Now, if I move to the other side, canine tooth here, and we rotate to the other side, you'll have the same thing that starts to happen where those lower teeth are getting very close to touching. Now, normally, if you're chewing in that condition and you have food or muscles at play, they, the teeth actually flex down a little bit. So they're more likely to touch in the mouth than they are on this model, okay? So let's discuss what that actually means. So basically what that means is that if her lower right jaw is, or her lower jaw is moving to the right, she has what we call a non-working interference on her left hand side. A non-working interference just simply means that a tooth is bumping that should not be bumping. Now the problem is, is this tooth continues to wear, her, low, her canines continue to wear on the right side, the interference will get worse. Uh, and the easiest way to think about it is like interference is not good, especially when it's on the opposite side of what you're chewing with. So if you think about it, when I'm chewing, I'm moving teeth to, if I move my teeth to the right, I'm chewing to the right. If my left molars end up touching or rubbing during that movement, it stimulates the muscles to contract and uh, become hyperactive. Not good, it's not good at all. Now, as we get older, we can tolerate. Some people can tolerate it and some people cannot tolerate it. So we always are gonna look for on the articulator, work, non-working side interferences. Now, working side interference, we could have another video and this is way too much dental information for you, but here is the summary. If you're not a dentist and you're watching this and you start to see, you know, like, feeling that my jaw is getting tight. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna look at your muscles, your joints, your teeth, your teeth on an articulator, your airway. We wanna figure out where is the problem coming from? Where is the culprit? And for this patient who's starting orthotic therapy, which is basically, uh, she's gonna wear, it's not a night guard guys, um, but it looks at some capacities that basically goes over top of your teeth and it allows us to eliminate these non-working interferences during movements without having to adjust her teeth right away. 
right? It's almost like a cast where we're trying to get everything back and healthy by having a cast that goes over top of the teeth and then we can basically recreate an ideal bite for her. The idea was once she gets an ideal bite, her symptoms go away and then we can figure out where her teeth are supposed to be so that when we restore them uh, permanently, they look beautiful and they function beautiful. So that's the idea. That's why we use an articulator. It's not just a fancy gadget that I use to impress uh, my other dentist friends because to be honest guys, the first thing I sold out of dental school was this dental articulator. I did not see the need for it. Fast forward three years and then I started getting into TMJ and TMD work and working with patients on a much more comprehensive type nature and I realized how important this tool actually is. So it's a very easy assessment, quick assessment to figure out where the teeth are actually rubbing and what needs to be done to get this patient back to a state of health.